Hello and welcome to the Key Stage 4 Pathways process for 2020. It's Mr McCulley, Deputy Head Teacher here. Usually I would be able to meet with you all at the front of the hall and answer any questions you have at the end of the evening. However, this year, due to the coronavirus pandemic, I'm having to put all of this information online. However, please don't panic. As you'll discover during this presentation, we have a variety of alternative ways of you getting the information you need and hopefully this year's process will be just as smooth as every other year's. GCSEs underpin your child's programme of study at Key Stage 4. For some children, they will take all GCSE subjects. However, there are a range of other subjects which are also available. That's important in the context of the new GCSEs and I'll go on to explain why. You may have studied GCSEs yourself, and if you did, these were likely on the A star to G scale. These were the old specifications. The new specifications, however, look very different. Most GCSE courses now contain no coursework. That's referred to as non-examination assessment in the new GCSEs. Where a subject does still have some coursework, it's always limited at a very small percentage, for example, 20 or 30%. By contrast, if you were to take GCSE English on the A star to G course, 60% of this qualification was gained before a child went anywhere near an examination room. There were five pieces of written coursework, and 20% of their grade was awarded for their speaking and listening skills. However, in the new reformed GCSEs, children face eight hours of, of examinations in English alone. Therefore you can see that it's important a to limit the number of GCSEs that a child studies so that it is manageable for them, but also to think about whether for your child it may be appropriate to also introduce some alternative qualifications as part of their programme. It may be that because of the type of career that they're considering, actually GCSEs aren't the most appropriate qualifications. For example, Henley and Arden has a specialism in performing arts. Now, don't worry, if your child isn't interested in the performing arts, then they can now leave them behind at the end of year eight and focus on the subjects that they enjoy most. However, if they are enthusiastic about the performing arts, we're one of very few secondary schools where children can opt to take music and dance and drama. Also, if they take these qualifications, you'll see that we use the specialist industry standard vocational qualifications for these subjects. So it's the BTEC in performing arts for acting, it's the RSL Level 2 in Creative and Performing Arts for Dance and it's the RSL Music Practitioners course for Music. This means a smooth transition for any students who wish to take these careers further because all of our local further education colleges and BOA, where many of our children also transfer, use these alternatives to GCSEs at Level 3 so this provides a smooth transition. If, however, your child loves dance and loves to dance and isn't necessarily considering a career in dance but would really like to include that as part of their programme, it's also a nice way to introduce a subject where some of their qualification will be awarded before the end of the course. And this means that at the end, when the students are now dealing with many more exams than they were in the past, um, some of their qualifications will have been banked and they, they won't need to worry about those when they're perhaps worrying about how they're studying for their GCSE in history or their GCSE in French. So the new GCSEs are graded from nine to one. There's no or little coursework in them and they're linear, so they must be taken at the end of year 11. They can't be taken early. This slide is intended to support those parents who haven't had any children go through the nine to one system before. On the right hand side, you'll see the grades that you're probably more familiar with. These are from A star to G and on the left you can see the new grades that represent the reformed GCSEs. As I've already said, the new GCSEs are far more academically rigorous. They have a lot of content which has come down from A level, and therefore you can see that there are more grades available at the top end of the scale. Grade seven pretty solidly represents a grade A, whereas the old A star grade has now been split in two, so a lower A star would be a grade eight, and an upper A star would be a grade nine. Grade 6 represents a very solid performance at what would have been a B grade in the old system. You can see that there are two grades that represent grade C. A 4 is considered a standard pass and that's the lower end of the old grade C, perhaps the first two thirds of it. A grade 5 represents the top end of an old grade C and the lower end of an old grade B and this is considered a good pass. 
this is the grade that you'll probably need if you want to study an A-level in a non-selective sixth form. If you'd like to go to a selective sixth form to study an A-level, you'd probably need to have a grade 6 or a grade 7 depending on the particular institution and I'll speak more about the general entry requirements for our local sixth form providers later on in this presentation. You can see that at the lower end of the attainment spectrum there are fewer grades that represent how children have done. So there used to be four grades available from grades D to grade G and there are now only three, three, two and one. If a child achieves a grade three then that might mean that they would be working on a level two course when they transfer to college whereas if they achieve a grade four and above that might mean that when they transfer to college they're able to progress onto level three qualifications. The key stage four options and pathways process is an exciting time for children. It introduces an element of choice over what they will study over the next three years of their time at school. It's also particularly motivating to know that all of your courses are now leading towards formal qualifications that you'll carry with you for the rest of your life. Some students will be very sure about the subjects that they want to choose because they'll have a very clear idea about the sort of career they have in mind when they leave Henley. Others will be unsure and not too clear about what they would like to do later on and therefore will probably be focusing and leaning more towards the sorts of subjects that they like. Of course, although there's an element of choice, there are certain subjects that students must study. For example, all children must take at least English, Maths and Science. They must also take one additional formal, rigorous academic qualification. More about that in a little while. You might remember from your own time at school that a grade C, which is now the grade 4-5, was very important because that's how schools were judged by the government. However, this didn't really take into account children for whom a grade C would always have been out of reach. And also, there would have been some children who would have arrived at the schools very, very able and perhaps should have gone on to get a grade A or A star, but only achieved a grade C, and yet this was still seen as a positive achievement on behalf of the school. So the government changed the way in which school progress was measured a couple of years ago, around about the same time as these new qualifications were introduced from 9 to 1. So schools are now measured by a system called Progress 8. That takes children's achievement in their best eight subjects and it divides them and looks at how much progress children have made since they left their primary school. So if it looked as though when they left their primary school they would likely achieve grades three or four but at Henley and Arden School they managed to achieve grades six. In other words they made more progress here than most children do at other schools in the country then that would be reflected positively in the score that was assigned to our school. The DfE have produced an informative video which tells you more about Progress A and how it's used to measure schools. And I'm going to let you see that video now. It's very short and they'll explain how Progress 8 works. And then once that video is over, I'll be able to explain to you why that's important in terms of the subjects that your child needs to choose for their Key Stage 4 programme of study. Progress 8 is the government's new way of measuring how well pupils make progress at secondary school. In the past, the main measure of school performance has been the percentage of pupils who got five or more a star to C grades in their GCSEs, including maths and English. Progress 8 is a better measure because it includes how well pupils of all abilities have done. The Progress 8 score tells you how well pupils in a school do, whether they get better or worse grades compared to pupils in other schools. Results in up to eight qualifications are counted in a school's Progress 8 score, and these are split into four categories known as buckets. The first bucket is for English. The second is for maths. These grades achieved in English and maths are double weighted to reflect the importance of these subjects. The third bucket includes three qualifications in science, computer science, history, geography, and languages in any combination. The fourth bucket is for any other three qualifications. The results are compared to the national average of pupils with similar academic starting positions. The academic starting point is based on pupils' results in English and Maths assessments, often known as SATs. A school's Progress 8 score is usually between minus one and plus one. Plus one means that pupils in that school are achieving on average one grade more 
in each qualification than similar pupils across the country. Minus one means that pupils are achieving one grade less. Schools with a Progress 8 score of below minus 0.5 are not achieving the minimum standard expected by the government. These schools may come under increased scrutiny by Ofsted. A school with plus 0.5 or greater is making well above average progress with its pupils. The average Progress 8 score of all secondary school pupils nationally is zero. It's a relative measure that shows if a school's pupils are achieving above or below the national average. It means that half of our secondary schools have positive scores and the other half have negative. The qualifications that your children achieve will continue to be what is considered by employers and by schools and colleges for post-16 places. I hope it was useful to hear from the DfE directly how Progress 8 works and I'll explain to you how that impacts on the framework within which we must work as a state secondary school around how your child's options are organised for Key Stage 4. One of the things that's very different from a few years ago is that all children must now study both GCSE English Language and GCSE English Literature. That's reflected in the way Progress 8 is scored and therefore all children at our school will pursue both of those courses for Key Stage 4. The higher grade of either literature or language can be used for general entry to college provided they achieve a standard pass or a strong pass. So in the past there was more of an emphasis on GCSE English language and if children didn't pass GCSE English language then they were made to retake it when they were at college or doing an apprenticeship or at their sixth form. Now so long as a child achieves a grade 4 in either English language or English literature, they won't be required to retake that when they reach their further education and provider. So it's about the magic four in either English language or English literature. It doesn't have to be English language any longer. I'm delighted to be able to reassure you that we have a strong track record of getting children onto the right courses at Key Stage 4. That's why ever since Progress 8 was introduced, we've always had a positive score. We've never fallen below that zero figure. That's because we think very carefully about the courses that are appropriate for children and we discuss it with them and we discuss their future career plans with them. Now this year I'm not able to do that in individual appointments in the way that I normally would but I'll speak to you more in a little while about how we're going to try to replicate that face-to-face -face meeting in an online and remote way. But I want you to rest assured that our school has a foundation of success that we will continue to build on and will support your child just as we have with each cohort of children that have come through in the past. On this screen is a worked example of a fictitious student and how they might get their Progress 8 score. You'll see on the right hand side the profile of subjects that students must choose to meet the government's requirements. So they all must study English and mathematics. That includes English and English literature. They then must study three English baccalaureate subjects. That means science, languages, geography and history. So all students in our school will study at least double award science and some of them will study triple award science. That would mean that they'd filled all three of their EBAC buckets. However, for double award science students, they must study at least one more academic qualification. That means that at Henley, to fill that EBAC bucket 3, the one that you can see there in the purple in the middle of the screen, they must study either history, geography, French or Spanish. Now, of course, they can study more than that if they wish, and many, many of our students, around about 60% last year, studied geography and French, for example, or might have studied French and Spanish as part of their programme, and that's fine. But it is required that they do at least one more academic subject. On the left-hand side of the page, you can see a worked example of what that might look like for a child. So because English literature was the higher qualification of English uh, literature and language for this child, that's gone in for their English bucket as it's referred to in Progress 8. The maths bucket is obviously taken up with the mathematics qualification. For this child, science has gone in as one of their EBAC subjects, French and geography are the other two. The second grade for science has dropped into the um, other bucket, as has English language because it was the lower of the two, and film studies as an eight. This child only achieved a grade 5 in dance and therefore whilst that qualification is there for them and that's great and they continue to use that for their college applications, that wouldn't contribute to the score which is used to determine how well the school is doing academically. 
It's important before choosing children's subjects and qualifications for Key Stage 4 to have a chat with them about the sort of career they might like to do when they're older. Some will have very fixed ideas, and that can be easier when choosing your options. Others will still be very unsure. Some children will have subjects that they want to leave behind because they don't enjoy them as much, and some children will be enjoying all of their subjects equally and finding it quite difficult to decide which ones to discontinue at this point. First of all, it's great that we do our options a year earlier than in some schools because that means that there's more time for them to get used to them and see whether they like them. If a child enters a course and by October they it's really not what they thought it was going to be, then they can always come back to me and talk about potentially switching between courses. We try to stabilise those courses by Christmas at the absolute latest. So we do some changes at the October half term and then we try to have most of those finalised by Christmas. If a child moves much after Christmas, that often means that they've missed so much of the course and there's so much for them to catch up that it's not really a good idea for them to move. But there is that buffer of the autumn term. Obviously, some of the subjects will become oversubscribed, so it's only possible to move into subjects where there is space, but there is still that safety net that if they really feel they've made the wrong choice, there will be at least one other subject that they're able to transfer to if it's not been the right thing for them. On the screen, you can see where people have tended to go in the past from our school. So there is 60% of children who went on to sick forms, whether that be at our local selective or non-selective schools. Around about 40% of them went on to specialist performing arts schools such as Bower and Elmhurst and to our local colleges like Stratford and Warwickshire colleges. A few of them also went on to apprenticeships and work-based uh, qualifications and also into the armed forces. So having a discussion now about what they might like to do later will help when it comes to choosing the particular subjects that they'd like to pursue for Key Stage 4. For the Key Stage 3 Pathways process, we have three pathways at Henley and Arden School. Pathway 2 is the one that the vast majority of children at our school will follow. Pathway 1 is our Literacy Support Pathway. If your child has not been studying French and Spanish during Year 7 and 8, this is the pathway that most of them will take. However, there will be a few children that are recommended to move into Pathway 2 because their English teacher will feel that they've made sufficient progress that they can take on a more academic programme for Key Stage 4. The only difference between Pathway 1 and Pathway 2 is that these children will study one fewer option so that they can spend more time on ensuring they get those key Grade 4 and Grade 5s if it's possible for them um, in their GCSE in English. They'll also study some additional qualifications called Step Up and Functional Skills. These are qualifications in their own right and will support children with their applications to further education colleges, but also the content that they study on these supports and underpins their study of that GCSE. GCSE in English. The aim with as many children as possible is to try to get them over that grade 4 hurdle so that they are not asked to resit their English qualification when they reach their further education um, provider. If your child has particular learning needs that mean that a grade 4 is not um, a realistic proposition for them, then the English teacher will discuss that with you. Um, all children will sit the GCSE in English um, and those children that may not be able to achieve the grade four, then the step up and functional skills qualifications will be supportive of their applications into college. Pathway three is by invitation only. This is our separate sciences pathway and it means that the child will study GCSE biology, GCSE chemistry and GCSE physics. This is a highly rigorous and academic qualification and it contains a lot more content than the double award science that most children will study. To be clear, all children study English maths and science. So it's not as if one of the sciences will be left out for any of the children. However, for most children, they then achieve two GCSEs as a result of that study, the double awards in science. But for a small number of children, they'll be offered that opportunity to study biology, chemistry and physics as separate GCSEs. This is often an aspiration for children who want to go on into careers in medicine, for example. However, I must make clear that even if your child is not invited to take part in the separate sciences pathway, it's perfectly possible for them still to go on to progress into any career. For example, many of the local independent schools don't offer the independent sciences at all. They only offer double award science. Therefore, if your child had a grade double grade nine in double award science and there was another child who had a seven 
7, an 8 and a 6 in the separate sciences, it would still be the child with the double grade 9 in the double award science that would be ahead of the queue of the other child. So it's a nice thing to be invited to do the separate sciences, but children shouldn't be disheartened if they're not. However, if you were really hoping to be on the separate sciences pathway and when your email comes through you realise that you're not, then you can speak to Mrs Piggott, the head of department, about the possibility of going onto a reserve list. The reason for this is that every year we have some children who are offered the opportunity to study separate sciences but who decline that opportunity just because it's not particularly what they have in mind for themselves. For example, if they want to go on to be a prima ballerina, it may not be a priority for them to study separate sciences. So so some places may become available in the next few uh, weeks or months. So if you'd like to be considered to go onto a reserve list and you find that you're not currently studying separate sciences but you would like to, then you can talk to Mrs Piggott about that as a possibility. Now Mrs Piggott will need to be very honest with you. If your test results and scores during year 7 and 8 suggest that it wouldn't be appropriate for you to study separate sciences, then she will let you know that because it is a highly challenging course and what we wouldn't want is for any child to become overwhelmed because they aspire to take the, 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 the three subjects but we really don't feel it's the right thing for them. However, if it's the case that yours was the next name on the list and you might well have been offered it if there just wasn't somebody with a slightly stronger test score than you, then you will be able to go onto that reserve lift and be considered for being invited onto the course in the future. The general pathway is available for all students and, uh, who are not in those other two pathways and that means that they choose their four subjects. So to summarise, literacy students will study three option subjects plus the step up and functional skills qualification. Uh, pathway three separate sciences students will study three option subjects and one of those options will be taken up with the extra study that's required for doing all three of the sciences separately and then pathway two children will have the choice of four option subjects. If, however, you're not aspiring to go onto a sick form and you'd like to go to a non-selective sick form or to a college, then you're focusing more on those grade fives and perhaps trying to get some grade sixes if you can. Or if you're looking to go on to a further education course, it might be that the grade four is what you need for your subject. So if you're thinking of that, you can look at the college applications now and you can look at the different websites and look at the sorts of qualifications you might go on to do. Um, but it's not so important to have a particular group of subjects if you're not planning to take the more academic route as you go forwards. Okay, this is probably the uh, slide that you've all been waiting for. This is how the options columns are arranged for this year. Now, I've had questions in the past about whether children can choose two subjects from within one column. To be clear, these options columns represent the timetable blocks on our timetable. So this is when the teachers are available to teach these classes. So unfortunately, the teacher of health and social care, for example, isn't available when option C is running because they might be teaching year 10 or year 7 at that time. So the subjects are grouped in this way because those are the times that the teachers are available to teach them. Um, so you do need to choose one from each column. However, if you're on literacy pathway, then you don't need to make any choices from option A because you'll be studying literacy during the option A block on the timetable. What's important for you if you're on literacy pathway is you must choose either GCSE geography or GCSE history. And you can see that those are in columns B and D. So if you choose geography, then you've got free choice in option C and option D. If you choose history, then you've got free choice in option B and option C. Of course you can choose geography and history if you wish to do so as well but you must choose one of those. If when your options come through to me um, I don't have either geography or history then your options will be rejected or I will have to just slot you into whichever one of those two has the um, most room for you to be able to go into it because it's a requirement that you must do a minimum number of um, English baccalaureate or academically rigorous qualifications. If you are on pathway three, which is the single sciences, then you will also be doing your single sciences during option A. But because you're already doing three English baccalaureate subjects because you're doing separate uh, GCSEs in biology, chemistry and physics, you have free choice across all of options B, C and D. So if you wanted to do triple science and then do music, dance and acting, then that would be absolutely fine. 
you can see which subjects are GCSE and non-GCSE because everyone that says GCSE in front of it is a traditional GCSE. The BTEC, RSL, CNAT and NCFE qualifications are the applied and general qualifications at level two. Um, and so you'll be able to see as you're going along which ones those are that you're choosing. Um, the applied and general qualifications are the ones where you're likely to collect some of your grade before the end of the course. So you can of course choose to do a very academic program but you need to think very carefully about that because if you for example chose Spanish, Geography, French and History that's fine but that is a very very academic program and you're going to face a lot of exams at the end of your course and have a lot of revision that you have to do if you're working towards that at the end. So usually we would recommend that at least one of the options for children is one of the options that is not one of those very strong English, uh, English baccalaureate ones. And that's one of the things I would normally talk to you about in the meeting that we would have. Um, however, don't be fooled. Those subjects also require an awful lot of commitment. Um, because if you're studying a B Tech or a CNAT, for example, you will collect your grade as you go along. Therefore, if you're not committed at the beginning of year 10, for example, and you don't get your... Um, your studies in order until towards the end of the course you might find that you're not achieving the grade that you would like because you will then be moving on to a whole new unit in year 11 and you can't go back and get that get that time back so all of the subjects require commitment but understand that if you choose GCSEs only then you are giving yourself the maximum number of exams to study for and to sit in that very pressured period at the end of year 11 if you introduce one or two qualifications that are of the style that isn't GCSE that might mean that there's less pressure on you and you're able to get higher grades in fewer exams at the end of the course but that would be for you to think about in terms of your academic profile and what you think is most appropriate for you. This table is reproduced inside the options brochure and therefore um, you can have a look at that or you can pause the video and have a look at this in more detail. Okay, I've spoken a little bit already about the fact that the reformed GCSEs are highly academic GCSEs and so this slide is to cover off the options available for non-GCSEs as part of the programme. Um, you can see that, as I said earlier, our performing arts are professional training through applied learning. So you've got the BTEC Level 2 in Performing Arts Acting, the RSL Level 2 Award in Creative Performing Arts Dance, and the RSL Level 2 Award in Music Practitioners. Other vocational and applied qualifications that we offer are the NCFE Level 2 Technical Award in Graphics, um, and the Level 2 Award in Business Enterprise and Marketing, and in Information Technology. So so those are the non-GCSEs that are available. Be careful if you're applying to, for example, a selective sick form, not to choose too many of these. It's fine if you're going to a non-selective sick form or to a college environment or onto a specialist arts school, for example. But if you are applying to one of the selective sick forms, they, they will not necessarily count the grade that you achieve in these subjects as part of their general entrance requirements. Now, mostly that's, for example, at Ulster Grammar, you need to get five GCSEs at grade six and above and most students will be studying nine GCSEs so if if the ninth GCSE that you're studying happens to be one of these you'd still have eight other qualifications to satisfy the general entrance requirements um, but you may need to be careful if you were going to have three of these as part of your choices because that would then limit you to your two GCSEs in English your two GCSEs in um, in science your maths and your one EBAC qualification. Okay, so um, have a little bit of a think about that. But having said all of that, um, it is a good idea. The reason we do nine qualifications where the government only requires eight as a minimum is because if you want to choose one of these as a sort of a nice subject or something that you're going to get some of the um, some of the learning and the gaining of your qualification out of the way before the end then you can do so so these are important ones to consider for those okay so how do you find out more about exactly what you're going to study how each subject is assessed whether there's lots of exams or whether there's some coursework all of that information is contained in the pdf that you've been sent and which is available on our school website so if you can't find the email you were sent or if you've lost 
your email, then if you go to henleyschool.com forward slash options, you can download a copy of the Curriculum Pathways brochure. You can view it online, view it on the iPad, or if you choose to, you can print it off. Um, but it's got the course details for all of the subjects. How are we going to ensure that you can talk to your teacher if you're not sure about whether the subject is right for you? So this Thursday, the 4th of June, all teachers who are responsible for delivering a key stage four subject that's an option have been asked not to do any live learning and not to set any work for their students so that they can be available to you to answer your emails and take your calls. Inside the brochure, you will see the email address for each of the people who are in charge of each of the subjects. And you'll also see a direct dial telephone number that you can contact them on on Thursday and get a response. Now, some of the subjects will be very popular and therefore it may be that if you try to call, you either receive a voicemail or a busy tone. If you receive a voicemail, leave your name and telephone number and the subject leader will call you back as soon as they're able. Or if there's a lot of detail in what you need to ask, it's perhaps better to just send that in the form of an email. If you send that email before Thursday, it's likely that, the, um, that you'll not receive a response until Thursday because we've given the teachers that time away from their classes on Thursday in order to respond. So um, you should receive a response on Thursday or soon after. Um, and if you don't, then you can always get in touch with me directly and my contact details are on the screen there. If you've got any general questions about the options process or if there's something that you haven't been able to have answered by the individual teachers. Um, some departments have also produced videos and these are available as a playlist on our YouTube channel. So for many of the subjects, you've got the write-up which is in the booklet and that's probably enough to go on. But for some subjects, there is a playlist on YouTube. The link for our YouTube channel's playlist of subjects that are available as videos is on the screen now and it was also sent out to you in the email. It's also linked on our uh, henleyschool.com forward slash options page so there's lots of different ways that you can find this particular playlist and reach these videos you'll see that there are videos available for English language and literature now all students must take language and literature but that explains exactly how the course is structured what texts you will study and then there are various members of the English department who are telling you about some of the things that you'll be doing when you're studying English um, as part of your key stage program. There's a video about performing arts acting. There's a film about GCSE film studies. Uh, Mr. Inslee, who does the option in both Cambridge National Information Technologies and Cambridge National Business and Enterprise and Marketing. Those are two separate options, but he's done one video which covers both of them. Miss Lash has put together a video about uh, GCSE religious studies, and Mr. McDowell has a video which tells you in much more detail about what's involved in the GCSE sports science course because that's quite a bit more academically rigorous than the course that it replaced a few years ago so if you want to know the detail of what the balance is like between theory and practical for example then you can watch that video for more information Okay, so you'll receive an email almost immediately after this one, hopefully, which tells you whether or not you are due to be on pathway one, pathway two, or pathway three. If you're on pathway one and you would like to be considered for moving into pathway two, in other words, not doing additional literacy, then you can get in touch with me and I can talk to the English department all about whether or not that it might be a possibility for you. Similarly, if you have been graduated from pathway one, i.e. you do literacy now, but but your teacher has recommended that you should move on to doing four GCSEs and that you no longer require the additional English support but you would prefer to stay with the additional literacy report and just do the three um, and you know you're sort of thankful for the opportunity but you'd rather stay on literacy then you can also get in touch with me we won't force anybody to come off the literacy course if you don't wish to and we're simply providing you with the opportunity to do so if that's what you would like to do similarly if you receive the email which is about pathway three but you're not but you would like to decline the offer to take separate sciences then just get in touch with me by email and I will ensure that the pathway to form is sent out to you. In the email that you get which tells you which pathway you're on there'll be a link to an electronic form that you need to complete. That form has got um, information for you to type in 
about your future career aspirations, whether or not you know which particular school or college you think you might like to go to and whether you'd like to do A-levels or not. So that's a free text box for you to type in. It's fine to type into that box that having discussed it with your parents, you're still not very sure what you would like to do, what career you would like to do, what school you'd like to go to, so you're still very unsure. Um, but if you have got fixed ideas, it's just useful for me to have that information when I'm looking at the choices that you've made later on. You will then have to choose a first subject for each column and a second subject for each column. Unfortunately, some of the subjects, by the nature of them, will become oversubscribed and there will likely be more children who would like to take the subject than we have places available. So for every subject, you must choose a reserve subject from that column, a second choice that you may be offered in the event that the first choice is full. If a subject becomes full, then we look at that student's academic record, their attitude to learning in that subject and various other factors when determining who will secure the place and who will not. Um, and therefore, it's a good idea to have a look at the progress report that was sent out recently in terms of what your attitude to learning has been like in those subjects and what your progress has been like in those subjects, how close or far away from target you are. If the subject is not at maximum capacity, you will be offered a place on that subject and should make that very clear. So even if your attitude to learning hadn't been as good as it might have been or if you weren't particularly making the progress that you um, should be, you will be offered a place now. It might be that I would have a discussion with you or call you up and say, do you realise that you're not making as much progress in this subject as you should be at the moment? Are you going to be taking this subject more seriously? Are you going to have a change of heart about how you're taking the subject? But if a subject has capacity, then you will be offered it. The only time that you will be rejected from a subject is if it is full and if there are other people who have shown that they have a strong aptitude or have taken that serious subject more seriously, handed their homework in more frequently, always been, you know, prepared to with the lessons, etc. So um, this is one of those early times in 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 life when how seriously you've taken school to date may impact on the subjects that you're offered for your Key Stage 4 programme. In the past, I've been able to offer first or second choices to almost every single child, but there are some subjects that tend to become oversubscribed. And if that happens, then, then we will need to look at second choices in some of the columns. Um, so I think that's all that I need to tell you for now. The deadline that you will need to uh, return those forms will be sent out with, in the email as it's sent out to you. And it's important you meet that deadline. If we receive options choices after the deadline that's been published, then that would mean that those would be considered last for any places where subjects may be oversubscribed. So it's essential that you meet the deadlines so that you are not disadvantaged when it comes to uh, perhaps any subject that might be oversubscribed that you then uh, offered your second choice because you weren't able to get your uh, information in by the time it was asked to be in for. So um, I hope that's made everything nice and clear for everybody. Um, as I said, the brochure contains telephone numbers and email addresses for all of the people responsible for the subjects and you can call and or email them on Thursday the 4th of June and you'll receive a response. And if you need support from me on Thursday, then you can also call me or email me and I'll try to get back to as many of you as quickly as I can. If you hear a busy tone, it's because our lines are overwhelmed. But if, uh, but if a, someone is just on the phone, then you should be able to leave a voicemail for somebody to call you back. Thanks very much for listening, everybody. I hope that this has been as clear as possible without seeing you all in a room and uh, good luck with your options choices and with choosing this very exciting time for the next stage in your career with us at Henley and Arden. Thanks. Henley and Arden School. Achieving excellence together.